Hello makers, I'm Katherine Harris with Sheer Stitchery and this week I wanted to talk to you about block number two, the Summer Blooms block right here behind me from the Vintage Restyle Summer Quilt Along. Let's get to it! So this week's block is the Summer Blooms block, which was designed by Katie Bolesky of Swim Bike Quilt. Now she was inspired by a vintage block from the 1930s, which was designed by Nancy Cabot called the Rocky Mountain Puzzle Quilt Block. And I've got a photo here from quiltersblog.com. Now Katie decided to simplify this block. So rather than having a four by four grid, she decided to reduce that to a three by three grid and completely remove the sashing on the inside of the block. Now, then she decided to add some curves in. So rather than doing half square triangles, she decided to do quarter circle curves in this really unique design. And I am absolutely loving all of these beautiful curves. Now, one thing that I know a lot of you quilters and sewists out there are a little scared about is doing some of these curves, but it is actually incredibly easy. The instructions are fantastic to follow. And if you purchase the pattern, there is a video done by her, which walks you through step-by-step step exactly how you can get the perfect curves on this. So do check it out if you purchase the pattern. I thought I would talk a little bit about a couple of tips to get you started if you're going to do some curve. Tip number one is shorten your stitch length. So the standard stitch length for garment sewing is about 2.5 millimeters. I like to reduce mine to about 1.6 millimeters when I'm doing quilting, especially when I'm piecing together curves. Because we are stitching along the curve, it is going to stretch because of the bias. So another thing that you do not want to do is you do not want to press these because if you press them, because you've got that curve that's cut on the bias, it is going to stretch out of shape and your block isn't going to fit as it should. But you do need to find a center point on each of the curves. So you'll have a convex and a concave curve piece that you're going to join together. So you're going to find the centerpiece just by folding it in half. You can either mark that with a finger pressed crease or with a pin. And then you are going to join those two together. And when you originally look at it, you think this isn't going to go together because one is convex and one is concave, but they do. Make sure you place them right sides together and then match up the ends and use a decent amount of pins along the inside of these curves and then just stitch as you regularly would with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, once that is all stitched together, another trick is to clip those curves. So you're going to want to clip within the seam allowance and get close to, but do not snip through that stitching line. And that will really create some ease when you're pressing it. Now, if you're working with smaller blocks, you probably don't need to do that. But if you are working with a larger block, it will really make a huge difference. And if you're familiar with garment sewing, we do this in a lot of our seams where we clip or notch the curves on this. So the last tip that I have for you guys is to then press that seam once the block is completely finished. That's when you can go ahead and press it. I really hope those tips helped you out when you're doing some curves, even if you're not working on this particular pattern. Now, this particular pattern also reminded me very much of the Drunkard's Path quilt block, or also known as Solomon's Puzzle. And there is a great resource that I will link down below where it actually looks at taking these quarter circle blocks that you create with the Drunkard's Path in a lot of different ways and manipulating that into a number of different shapes. Quiltscapesquilting.com has a full layout of many different Drunkard Path blocks for you to test out. 
And a little fun fact here, the Drunkard's Path or the Solomon's Puzzle quilt block with these quarter circles actually dates back to Egyptian times when quilts that had this same pattern were found in Roman quilts and textiles. Now, I also wanted to show you a quick layout on if you were to use this exact same quilt block for an entire quilt, if you wanted to create that if you were not going to finish the whole sampler or if you wanted to create another quilt and i think it looks really stunning but what looks even more gorgeous is the quilt that katie has shown in her blog and i will link that down below where you're using these blocks to create a well, as the name suggests, summer bloom pattern. And I think it is really gorgeous and would be fun to do in a lot of different colors. The fabrics that I use today are from Northcott and I will link them down below. And if you would like to follow this series specifically for the summer sampler, I will link that playlist as well. Until next time, makers, let's get our sewspiration on. <laughs> Bum 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 b